Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a year, it's flying by, but I'm happy to announce that the Wooker Fugan is back. And I'll be bringing this one to you in an on-the-road style, as we drive past the pub we'll soon be in, in a matter of hours. First stop is the beautiful Gracetown Centre, that's sarcasm, where it's obvious to see someone had a great night, Bud Wiser and Frazzles. His mate said, screw that, I'm getting a takeaway. Didn't like the rice though, did he? It's mad to think not long ago I was filming music videos in here. I was already on a thin line, I was finna dash that. I only rap facts, by this time I should have cash stats. What man slapped, I was trying to act flash, especially that cash, trying to act track gas. I need to work out if I'm going to be two hours or a little bit more. Okay, I'm doing it. I'm paying the £2.10. And I'm a simple man, easily pleased and contactless on a parking ticket machine makes me happy. And of course, if you pay, you must display. I'll just wait this ticket on top of all the others. And so we're walking. And with it being early in the morning, I'm pretty tired. However, this is the World Championships of Football Accumulators and Grand National, so I must perk myself up. Welcome to Grace Pie and Mash, where I have arrived first. Bottle of water. Into the WhatsApp group I go. I'm here. It looks like everyone else is lost after following Lee Henry's postcode for the Pie and Mash shop. Genius. Here's an update from Valley member Nick. We'll see him soon. Meanwhile, second through the door is Mr. Henry on baby duties this morning, and he is ready for his first ever Wooker for Gun. Shortly followed by a fellow founding member, it's Tomo and Graham not far behind. Breakfast arrived, need to put some brown sauce on that sausage sandwich. Henry's breakfast is here too. Next up, we've got Tony, and now Dan's here as well. He's hosting today. Everyone say thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. For the second year running, Tony's come to the pie and mash shop and got pie and mash for breakfast. Dan's opted for scrambled egg on toast, plenty of salt on there as well. More people, Jordan's here for his first Wooker for Gun and was a another founding member. Somewhere along the line, Nick showed up. He's here. Hello. And just like that, breakfast done, we're on to our second leg of the day. We're off to play some bets. And what a better place to go? Coral. And even though everyone knew the rules beforehand, it seems that some needed reminding. And whilst we're on the subject, I might as well remind you as well. Welcome to the World Championship of Football Accumulators and Grand National, aka the Book of a Gun. And it was on this very day five years ago that Palmer's FC was formed. So what are the rules? Rules, rules, let's go over the rules. Other than eat, drink, and laugh, the next four rules are essential to follow if you're gonna have a successful Book of a Gun. Rule number one, all players must stake £10, no more, no less, on the 3 p.m. kickoffs. Rule number two, all players must place a further £10 into the kitty. Rule number three, the player that wins the most money on their bets wins the kitty. And finally, if no player wins their bets, the Grand National will decide. Each player has a shirt number in this team. That shirt number correlates to the horses that are running in the race. A horse that finishes highest in the field with our shirt number wins the kitty. It's worth pointing out though that in all the time that we've been doing this, the Grand National has never decided. So you're getting tips from followers. Robert Worth. You better win the Wooker for doing this year, Nick. I'm expecting a bank of fivefold. He come good. He sent me this one in yesterday. I said, I'm going to bang that on. It's 123 to 1. Could be the winner. Best of luck. Say hello to Smith for me. Hello, Robert. How you doing? Now, it's got to be said that the way the fixtures have fallen this year, this is very, very tough. There's no real bankers, so it should be an interesting afternoon. Oh, look, it is the reigning champ of Wookofgun has joined us in his first year. He smashed it. Here's Uncle Sam. Let's remind ourselves. <laughs> Yes. So what is that, Sam? Man City both and hold both the scores. Liverpool both the scores. Fulham and Ipswich both the scores. Norwich and Reading both the scores. Charlton and Southampton both the scores. Seven million money both scores. Six goals, hundred percent to one. Oh wow, done. And the champ is here. Now for me personally, I haven't really bet this year, so I'm going to get a random number generator. I should just learn this off Jordan. It's all luck though, that's the thing. I haven't got no form or guide. I just choose, choose a random number. That's my Jordan strategy. Let's see how I was, was getting on. Yeah. Confident? Always. A one none. Founding member. Founding member. Yeah. Ready to rock the day. Good luck. We'll be sopping the day. We also have another new competitor for this year. He missed breakfast, but he's here ready for the bets. Josh, talk to us. First book of Fugan. Yeah, we're going to win it. Oh. A lot of confident people today. Luke came very close last year. He's just arrived. That's a lovely shiner he's gotten in from the cup final the other day. We often see screenshots in the group from Tomo when he's winning. Not losing, though. <laughs> So as final bets are placed, it's time to move on to the next stage of the day. Another bookies in Paddy Power. This is where we come to place personal bets on the Grand National for friends and family. It's also where mine and Tomo's blind bet comes into play. We've got to go to St. R. Who else? Hold up, but you're in the centre of the... This is your area here, yeah? So you're in the centre, that's... And also perfect candidate. Before we move on to our next leg, back round to Coral to meet Troy. Hello, Troy. How you doing? Following this, everyone puts in money because as you can tell from the sky, it's a lovely day. Let's go and get barbecue food. Welcome to Morrison, where I'm on a mission to sneak unwanted food into the basket to see if anyone notices. It's happened before and it will happen again. Nick also buys a little bit more meat and expertly puts some baby corn into the basket without even Luke seeing. <laughs> As expected, here they are by the meat section. Right there, ladies and gentlemen, are my targets. Dan's got plenty of meat there. I'm going to disguise it within it. And off Dan goes. Teamwork makes the dream work. Mission successful. It looks like Dan appears to like this game. <laughs> 
Someone else is on it as well and added some soup. As you can see, Jordan is certainly having a workout right now. The food team have just met with the drinks team, and together we have catered for today. In goes the baby corn. How much is this going to cost us? Oh, lovely. So that, my friends, is shopping done. It's time to load up the cars. Dan's going to go back to his with a couple of others, and we'll meet him at the pub. <laughs> Oh look, we swipe Pep from Palmer's FC, getting cash out. He's off to get his haircut. Me and was then jump in our cars and head towards the pub. Off we go. Fast forward five minutes, I'm parked down the road. And now we're at the pub. And now we're in the pub. Mine's a Disserano and Coke. Tastes just like Dr. Pepper. Now we have a problem. We want to play ball, but these guys want to play pool. This is not good. I'm not being funny, but we need to uh, play ball. Yeah, we're going to go to the ship. Oh, the table. Not even a screen on for us to watch the football. It's a sad day at the pub, so we're out of here. To another pub. The ship to be exact, which is 100 yards down the road. And would you look at that? The football's on. And a dedicated room with ball is free. Let's see what happened last year. Was it with his last ball? He's got to, got to make something happen here. I mean, he's got straight. This is a fantastic shot. It's a fantastic shot. Got me a power shot. Oh! Yep, Andrew, the current holder of the ball championships, but he's not here. So there will be a new winner today. Is Henry and Tony getting a feel for the table. Meanwhile, Troy's setting up the tournament ladder, and Tomo's drawing the names. Now, because of numbers, we've got a couple of preliminary games and a couple of buys. Now, for those that are new to ball, here's the rules explained. It's a five ball game, similar to bowls, but it's on a pool table. And it's all about getting your ball as closest to the black as possible. If you hit the black off of the back cushion, you are out, and your opponent automatically wins. First game today is Henry versus Dan. Let's see what happens. Oh, let's not. It was a poor game. Dan overkilling it here, hitting that black off the back ball. Sending Lee straight into the first round against. Good. Duh, I don't know. It's Tomo's right. And Nick's taking over. It's Lee versus Graham. Next game to get on the board was Troy versus Jordan. And it's, it's not really going well, is it? We skip to the last balls. Troy is currently winning. Can he get any closer here? Looks like he is. It goes towards that black there. And that, my friends, is his best shot of the game. Jordan, can he pull it out of the bag? Remember, guys, it's a five ball game. Here it goes. It's got a bit of weight behind it. It's hit that black towards the red, but. Oh! oh, 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 oh older, older. Yeah. This is. It is Troy. Like my pants. Messy. Wait, that was the ball, wasn't it? Right, so Nick basically messed up the game. We couldn't decide who was closest, so it's one ball. Closest wins. <laughs> right, Joel, steady on. Not the best of shots from Joy. What can Jordan produce to get on the board? <laughs> oh! Yeah, too much from Jordan, and that puts Troy into the next round. He's only going to land in a dazzling tyre against myself. We now move on to the final preliminary game, and it's Josh versus Wazza. Josh has just pulled off a lovely shot there. He is currently winning. Wazza on his last ball. What's he going to produce? No, he's straight down the alley. A founding member of the game goes out very early in this tournament. So as Josh's name goes onto the board, it is set. Henry versus Graham. Troy versus Smith. Josh versus Tony. Nick versus... And it's straight onto the first game of the ball. Henry versus Graham. Josh's come out for a pint. Hello, mate. And Henry's shot there puts Graham in the lead. Black ball nearest to the yellow, and it must run in the family. Graham here with a lovely shot. Red onto the black. Nearer the yellow. We've got a kiss. It's beautiful stuff from Graham. But don't forget, as I keep on saying, this is a five ball game, people. Henry with his final shot. It's a crowded table. What's he going to do? Red towards the yellow. No, it's not enough. Graham's yellow closest to the black and all that leaves him to do is roll that down the table and go through to the next round. It's handshakes all round. It's a gentleman's sport. And here is confirmation of that result. Graham into the next round and he'll be facing up to myself or Troy. Talking to which, here is that game and I'm just going to set the tone here. <laughs> oh! Oh, he's done this before. You know, I played a bit in various pubs, but here's Troy looking to spoil the party here. He's hit the black away. I'm still in the lead, but he's made things a little bit more awkward. Now, as my beloved Tottenham always do, it's time to put the pressure on. Is that a much better shot. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh. This is a tough one for Troy. He's going for a power shot off of the back cushion, but it wasn't to be. And all he did in the end was confirm victory for myself into the next round I go. It's now time to move over to the other side of the ladder. But before Nick jumps on, it's Josh versus Tony. And we're having a bit of a game here. Josh in the red currently closest, but here's Tony's shot. By knocking Josh's red ball away, Tony takes the lead. I'm going to skip to Josh's last ball. Needs something here. But as you can see, that goes well, well wide, leaving Tony to throw it down the alley. He's into the next round. And he will be facing the winner of Nick and Tomo. Two absolute powerhouses of the game. That's a very good shot. <laughs> that is That's a statement. Oh. <laughs> Here's Tomo taking powerhouse to another level. Completely undoing Nick's good work. Well, almost. Nick's still in the lead. Unfortunately, tactics didn't change for Tomo. Oh. Oh. Tomo hitting the black off the backboard and it goes into the semis. But first up is Graham versus myself. I'll go yellow. And first. Oh! oh. oh. So first ball of the semi-final and it's it's all right. It's set the tone. As we move on, you can see Graham's done some damage to me here. And he's got into the lead as well. Straight near the black. I'm taking the other side, seeing if I can get closer. Let's see if it is. We have confirmation from the point. Moving on to the second from last ball. Graham looking to mix things up and he's knocked my ball closer to the black. Just though, into the final ball of the game. As it stands, I'm in the lead. Graham could spoil things here, but that throw there didn't do any damage. Table stays as it is, confirming that I go through to the final of the Wookiee Ball Championships. Who's going to face me? Let's find out. It is Nick versus Tony. 
and this ball here straight down the middle onto the black. It's quite heavy as well. Is it going to hit the back ball? No, it doesn't. Just. And there you have automatic focus at its best. It's a dangerous game, this one, with the black being so close to the cushion. Nick's got in there. It's close, but the yellow is closest. Just. Is Nick again looking to get involved in the mix? Looks a good shot as he's in between the yellow and the black. <laughs> I think it's still yeah, yellow. Definitely. Pondering for myself, confirmation from Waza, yellow is still in the lead. So here comes Nick again. Same tactics, driven ball towards the black, and he is now in the lead. This was Tony's final attempt at getting back into the mix, but it wasn't to be. Which confirms the final for this year's Wookiee Wookiee. It's myself versus Nick. Two balls in, a nervy start for both players, but here's this shot. That's a shot. Yeah. Here's Nick with the reply. Oh, no. oh. Just misses. Gonna skip to the final ball of the game because no one got close following that. You understand the pressures if you Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Was that right there the tournament winner? Well, Nick's gonna have something to say about it. Oh, 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 and just like that, it is confirmed that I'm the Wook of Gun 2017 ball champion. The fans go wild and the celebrations begin. Andrew, I'll be taking that trophy, please. In fact, to be honest, I don't think we had a trophy. But now we'll just confirm it on the board in chalk. I am the win. Talking to win, Southampton are. And our host today is definitely not happy about that. Big Garden vibes. I always found the Wook of Gun is the start of the summer. Fast forward to the 90s, Southampton 2 new up really late slip, didn't they? So it's about that time to leave. Loving the carpet. Thanks to the ship for hosting. They do a good carver as well. Next stop is the Palmer's FC shop. Where I'm looking for barbecue. Barbecue sauce for the ribs and cheese for the burgers. Palmer's shirt, Palmer's banners. Quick hello to the owner. Someone wants to say hello. Not so much. Gary Palmer! And then it's a short walk to Dan's. Side gate's open, he said. Hello. Hello? Dan? Oh, here he is. He's in his garden room slash office. Right, so I've tried to bring bring Sky out into the garden, but Sky Q doesn't want to work this far. So now I'm installing apps on Windows to try and make it work on my PC. But according to this, it has to be under 10, 8, 10, um, 1024 resolution. So, um, Alright? So, no Wookiee Wookiee. Oh, I mean, we've got TV, so I'm just trying oh, to get it out of the garden. I'll leave Tech Man down to try and sort that. Meanwhile, in the garden, place your bets on who will be on this first. Would you look at that? We have a TV in the garden. In a couple of minutes, we have liftoff. Is Henry now getting everyone's money together for the kitty? And from ball in the pub, it's on to darts in the garden. The kitty is complete. 130 quid in there. And that will sit under the remote until the afternoon's football has come to an end. Okay, on to more pressing matters. Food. Who's doing it? Tomo. Good man. And would you look at that? We've got an early goal in the Premier League. It's 1 0 to Palace in the M23 derby. Talk to us about Dunfermline, Nick. It's all about Dunfermline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, back to the Premier League. Burnley are leading, but does this mean anything to anyone? Early days, anything can happen. Oh, someone should shout that goal. Someone should shout that Oh, it can change in a minute. Hey. As we rush back down to the TV, what's it saying? 2 0 Burnley, they're loving life right now. With burgers on the go, Jordan's released the buns. We've got Josh having a check on his first book of a gun. We haven't seen much of Luke today, but there he is, busy in the kitchen. I've been called. Dan wants me upstairs. Hello. Uh, he wants help with the cushions for the garden furniture, I see. That's a shame. I thought it was going to be my lucky day. This is like literally <clears> the first day of summer. It is, it's brilliant. That's all the cushions down, just got to take him out. Would you look at that, Tomo's turned around the burgers early, that's good. And Palace are now 2 new up. Again, I don't know if that's going to mean anything to anyone, but we'll see. Into the kitchen and Luke continues to be busy. Looks like he's on marinating duties. Very much an unsung hero today. Well done, that man. What a game we're having in this one. Brighton pull one back. And this day is really kicking off, literally. Chef Tomo is not happy with his assistant, Luke. Win! Oh, very much oh, on there. What does this mean for people? I'm sure it means something. But more importantly, the minted lamb is on the go. Love it. He's me doing my bit for the day, setting up a designated bin for the bottles. It's a nice touch. Bin bag. There. Bottles. Yeah. Burgers are done. Happy days. Lamb's done. Even better. In a half time, we see what's coming in, what's not. Right about now, I'm way off. Nice one, Derby. Oh, would you look at this? We've got Kieran visiting. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Following his haircut, Pep's joined us too. Hello, mate. Finally, Dan's got to sit down, but it doesn't look good for him. Henry looks happy, though. Jordan and Troy continue to check. Nick, an experienced winner at the Book of a Gun, looks very relaxed as well. Has he got something? We will see. And finally, Luke gets to sit down and enjoy some food. Let's press on to the nail biting part of the day. What's was a need? That's only for 45 quid, but I'm waiting for a chunk and go on the same thing, though. Only 45 quid. As long as you're on the board, you're in the mix. For anyone that thought Tom I'll be the first on the hammock. Well done. Was I still waiting patiently? Can something happen for him? Time for me to check my bets. As the full time start rolling in, some mirror and the champions. Well done. Having checked my bets, this is where I'm at. Was a Graham and Henry are poised. Oh, but hello, I could be back in the game. Bristol Rovers late goal. Peterborough can grab one against Rochdale late on. I'll be looking at 29 quid. Ah, nice one. I'm out. Back up the other end of the garden. Kieran's taking over on the chicken drumsticks. Dan's on the crisps. And judging by Was's reaction, Charlton or South End didn't score. He's out. So the big question is who amongst us has taken this kitty? If anyone. Well, I can confirm that Nick finished on absolute zilch. Then Graham and Dan, zero for them as well. Tomo, always in the mix. Zero. Pep's just here for the beers. Troy finished on zero. Jordan finished on zero. Josh had one big bet for 190 million. That'll only pay him a million, though. We soon found out it was void anyway because he went for a late kickoff. Silly boy. Luke, anything? No. Big fat zero for him. Sam, reigning champion. Can he bring it home? No. Zero. Tony was zilch as well. Wasn't we know about? He's out. So is this the first year where the Grand National decides? Unfortunately not. Henry pulled something out of the bag. As you can see, he wrote down the time that this bet came in. 3.30. He has won the Wook of Gun on £16.57. So sad times for Sam. It's time for him to relinquish his title. Hand over the kitty to Henry. He's only gone and got a bottle of bubbly from the host as well. It's also to throw away my bat slips in the makeshift bin and then hope for the best in the Grand National. Here's Tony's party trick. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Oh. Tomo's gonna find a chocolate dipping adventure set. Lovely. Nice. Are we ready? I think we are. And they're off! Uh... Race happens. Skip to the end. And we got some winner winner chicken dinners. Luke was one. Tony was another. And so was Dan. All having Tiger Roll. And with that, it brings us to the end of the Wooker for Gun. Henry, our new champion. It's been a great day, plenty of laughs as per usual. Big thanks to Dan for hosting, Tom and Luke on the food, and of course to you guys for tuning in every single year. Massive thank you for all your support on this channel. It doesn't go unmissed. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell as well to be notified when a new video comes out. And whilst you're here, why not check out the previous Booker for Gun videos? Thanks again, and we will see you in the next one. <laughs>